Hi everyone, it's Anne Crafty Kimchi. Welcome back to my channel. I am back with a follow-up video on my resin journey. So uh, if you've seen my last video, you know I've been kind of obsessed with creating with resin and I guess there's no better time like now to start a new crafty journey, right? So um, I'm back with just wanted to share kind of my tips and tricks that I've kind of learned and of course I'm still learning because it's an ongoing process, but I've been playing it for with it for about a month, and it's a lot of fun. Um, so I just wanted to show you these two different resins that I've purchased, and this is the Aluminlight brand, the Amazing Casting Resin, and this one is the clear one, and this is the one that cures white. And I just wanted to show you the differences. The uh, clear one actually does take about 24 hours, uh, to cure so if you're looking for that instant gratification you are not going to get it with this uh, the uh, white curing resin it takes about 10 minutes and there's such joy <laughs> that comes from demolding uh, these resin pieces but it it is a lot of fun it is a lot of fun but there are some trickiness with both different resins and I just kind of want to go over this this one I'm still kind of mastering and I've created some pieces here as you can see it does cure absolutely clear there's just a whole bunch of glitter in it so I got a little glitter happy so you can see through it but there is a lot of glitter and if you see here a lot of gilding flakes and this one I added some mica powder and I've had tons of those Ranger Mica powders, powders and I've been adding them into the resin pieces. I'm still not sure what different kind of style I like. I have not tried alcohol inks only because I've been trying to play with figuring out how much glitter and, um, you know, Nouveau flakes I can add in them. But this is has been fun for me because I, I don't get to use my glitters as often as I like so it's fun to actually see them in your pieces like this and you know getting to use my stash and this is the white curing resin and this is how it, it actually cures this is 100% just uh, straight poured into the mold and this is the Frank Garcia uh, Dulce mold and I love this mold but anyways this is how it cures and this is after I add alcohol inks. So this is actually a deep red. And since it's, it cures white, it turns everything into a fun pastel. And I love this frame. So I just want to kind of go over the white curing resin only because I still haven't mastered the clear. This is my first box and I'm still playing with it. And um, it's just a little bit trickier with the clear. So let's focus on the... Um, hey guys, white so I'm going to go over the tips and tricks that I've learned with this amazing casting resin. I would recommend uh, doing this in a well-ventilated room only because it is toxic. Um, it is, there's chemicals and, you know, I would prevent, I would keep this away from kids. <laughs> um, I definitely use gloves. I even use a, an apron just to make sure my clothes if there is some splashing or anything or spillage, then I don't get it on my clothes. And um, I always have all my supplies ready. And I'll, I'll do a video of kind of just my process. Um, I love watching them and, you know, hopefully you'll learn something as well. Um, the tip to this specific mold is to mix slowly. So I go really slow and... It does cure super fast. Um, like it says on the box, it cures fairly instantly. 10 minutes is very fast. And once the resin does heat up, you know it's starting to cure. So you better start moving and pour like a mad woman. Um, so I just wanted to show you how I kind of mix my inks to get the colors and you'll see that in my video of my like clip of just how I mix and pour um, the resin comes with two boxes and basically the two boxes is 
the resin and the hardener and the B is the hardener. This hardener will start the curing process. So I always start with this last. I do measure the um, equal parts. They are one, one and one um, in terms of quantity. So I pour them first and then I pour the part A in a mixing cup. I get all my supplies from the Dollar Tree. I am not willing to spend a lot of money. So this, this popsicle sticks, Dollar Tree, this mixing cup I got from the Dollar Tree. So basically I take my part A, pour it into the cup, put my alcohol inks into the cup, and I recommend three drops and up. Uh, you want the color to come out. And I think anything less than three really is um, a little bit undertone. So start with three and up. Um, and then I mix in the the alcohol inks with my part A fully. And once I see that the color is kind of mixed into the mixture, I then pour in my cup of part B. And then I, I start stirring slowly. Okay. I have all my molds ready. So once this is ready to go, I pour. Okay. Um, I've tried using glitter and they really weren't, I don't know, the best quality for me. I didn't really love it. And I'll show you an example of kind of just, um, so here's one that I made with the Frank Garcia Dulce mold. You can see I finished this. I did paint the, um, the main and stuff with the gold marker, but you can see I added some nouveau gilding flakes. Sorry about that. And I don't know, it, it, it didn't actually finish as nicely as this one. I haven't painted it, but it's, it's a beautiful piece. It's, there's no bubbles. There's, there's very little mess to this. So I think with this resin, I do prefer just keeping it, um, clean. And I just wanted to show you, you know, the, the, the pieces come out either white or whatever color you've finished it with, but it's really the accent pieces that, and what you add to it that just really makes it shine. So this mold is from Elizabeth, who's BD Bomb Bomb, here on YouTube and Instagram. And I love this mold. I've been having a lot of fun with it. Look how cute this typewriter is. I purchased this from her, so... I pour this in pink and then I went around with some gold markers. There are still some imperfections, but after I painted with gold, you can hardly tell. It's such a beautiful piece and I'm obsessed. Um, let me see if there's anything else. I think that's pretty much it. And you know, you guys can feel free to ask me questions. I'm really here to help you out, right? So I did mold some, I did pour some, um, stuff in and I just kind of wanted to demold it with you there is something so satisfying this like ASMR of molding but there's something so satisfying of pulling out a piece so there is some little bits here that either I just cut them off with a scissor and I like to do this when it's not fully cured I think that like over an hour you know, it gets super hard. So I like to trim it when it's a little bit softer and I'll leave this piece to the side to let it dry a little bit longer. But like there's something so satisfying of peeling a mold. So I just kind of bend back the mold because I don't want to bend the piece. And then I just peel it out. Oh, so cute. So, so cute. Again, this is the Dulce mold. I'm in love with this mold. And they're such cute little pieces. I've actually added uh, this on a bale and added it and made a charm out of it. I, like there's the, the limits are endless with this. And I just want you to see there is a piece here. Oh, here. I did show this on my Instagram. I created this uh, resin heart and I took some um, Sunny Days word stickers and this is a Maggie Holmes stickers and I added a little jemmy on top and this embellishment is ready to go. 
I mean, I just, there's so much fun with this. I'm going to keep going and I'll leave a clip of myself doing a pour a mold. And I, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching. Thank you.